Hello. Today, we will talk about lights and shadows, and we'll learn how to properly set them up. This is arguably one of the most challenging topics in computer graphics. So let's dive in the nuances. We begin with the sunlight. So let's add it to the scene. Rotate it to make it lighten the object in the scene as we want. Increase its intensity for more contrast between light and shadow. Before we start setting up shadows for the sun, we need to tweak it a little bit. Go to Shadows, then to Cascaded Shadow Map tab, and set count to 1. This is needed to achieve the consistency between Blender and the real-time rendering, since Verge 3D supports only one shadow cascade. Once we have done with that, the shadows have seemingly disappeared. In fact, they just have not enough pixels to be shown correctly, because the cascade is too big. It is important to understand that under the hood, the shadows are represented by a texture just like vanilla images. Its size can be set in the Render tab, Shadows, Cascade Size. Right now it is set to 1024 pixels. So what does it mean? Let's illustrate this by adding a simple texture with the same resolution, 1024 pixels. Set its size to 200 meters, that is the same size as for the shadow cascade. Now we can see how big the pixels are. The same situation is with the pixels of the shadow map. That is why we cannot see the shadows at all. To help this explanation, we can disable soft shadows in the shadows preferences of the render tab. Now I will be gradually changing the max distance parameter and see how the shadows change. If we decrease the size of the shadow map, it will use more pixels for rendering shadows in the area that is important for us. So with about 5 meters, we obtain good enough quality for our shadows. If we make it less than 5 meters, the shadows will start disappearing with distance. Now let's check it out in the Verge 3D engine. But before doing this, we change the shadow map filtering type to basic in the Verge 3D parameters of the render tab. We will check them all out to understand what shadow types are available to us. Basic shadows are fast, but look very rough, as they have no anti-aliasing applied. Nevertheless, they can be used in some cases, for example, to imitate old-school graphics like in the arcade racing demo. The next shadows type is called bilinear, and it offers very basic anti-aliasing. The edges look smoother than with the basic shadows type. Next, there is the PCF shadow type. With PCF, we can apply some fade-out effect that looks much smoother. The next shadows type is PCF with bilinear anti-aliasing. And this results in further smoothing. Another variant, Poisson Disk, is the same PCF algorithm, but with more advanced anti-aliasing applied. It results in most plausibly looking shadows. However, if you look closer, you can still observe pixelated shadow edge. But when viewing from a distance this looks okay. For PCF shadows, you can tweak the blur radius parameter to adjust the smoothing level for the edges. This may help us to get rid of those ugly steps on the edges. Sometimes, you may stumble upon artifacts like shadows detaching from the objects that cast them. To fix these, we can tweak the bias parameter for the shadows. In this case, we decrease it to the minimum. Let's check it out in the engine. It got better, but the shadows are still not near enough to the casting objects. We can try to fix this by increasing the resolution for the shadows. Let's set it to 2048. Now it's almost perfect, and the problem can only be seen at a short range. Okay, let's set the size of the cascade back to 1024 for now. 
Finally, we should talk about ESM shadows, which are the most challenging technique of all to set up. After exporting the scene, we can see that the shadows seemingly disappeared. Actually, they are just blurred too much. Go to the shadow settings and set the blur radius to zero for now. This means that the shadows will be really sharp. After exporting, the shadows can be seen again. However, they have different intensity. Some of them are sharper, others look faded out, and some of them are not visible at all. Let's try to fix this. The ESM shadows can be tweaked with two parameters specific to them. They are called ESM scale size and ESM bias. We can gradually increase the ESM scale size to get rid of the difference in intensity. Let's set it to 5 for the start. After exporting, we can see it got somewhat better. If we increase it further, to 10 for example, the shadows will be almost same in intensity. A bit more, to 15. Now it's perfect. Okay, what about shadows detaching from some objects? This issue can be addressed with the other setting, the ESM bias. Let's set it to 5 and export to the engine. The artifacts became less noticeable. Let's increase the ESM bias a bit. Almost gone. There is another problem, however. The more we increase the ESM bias, the more it deforms the shadows, making them dissimilar to the objects that cast them. This can seen more clearly if we increase the blur radius. This results in smoother shadows, and the detaching is almost gone. Yet other artifacts have appeared on the object edges. These can be only fixed by moving the object itself. Now the issue is gone. One more thing. The problem with using the ESM bias and ESM scale size is that the shadows may lose their details if overdone. Therefore we should adjust these parameters until the moment the artifacts just start to appear. Now it looks much better. Finally, the objects that receive shadows display some artifacts too. Those can be removed by increasing the bias. After exporting, we can see the highest quality shadows that we can obtain with the ESM technique. Now let's talk about other light sources like point, spot and area. Their settings are almost identical, so I will only explain some nuances that are different. Let's add a simple point light to our scene. Switch the shadow type to PCF Poisson Disk. The shadows are already of good quality. However, instead of cascade size we will tweak the cube size settings to adjust the resolution for the shadows. Look how the quality of the shadows changing according to cube size resolution. Let's set it to 128 and see how it looks in the engine. Even with such a small shadow map, we managed to obtain a very good quality for the shadows. Still, shadows that are cast by some small objects are no longer visible. To fix this, we can tweak the bias while controlling the results in the Blender viewport. After exporting, we see that the shadows are almost correct, yet they are a bit detached from the bottoms of the objects. We can get rid of this by increasing the cube map resolution. Okay, now we have very nice shadows. Now let's increase the blur radius to make them smoother. After that, we can observe some new artifacts on the ground. 
Those can be fixed by raising the shadow bias a bit. As we can see, it actually helped. We can also enable the custom distance parameter for the light source to further improve both the quality and performance. All other types of light sources are handled almost in the same manner. For example, let's switch the type to spot. Here we can increase the angle and blending for the light spot edges. All other shadow parameters remain as in the previous setup. As a result, we obtained the same level of quality for the shadows as with the point light before. Now let's switch the light to area and adjust its position a bit. When viewing in the engine, we can see that the shadow settings worked perfectly for the area light as well. However, there is an important note to make. If you want to use the rectangle shape instead of square for your area light, it is more correct to adjust its size using the X and Y parameters in the light settings, rather than scaling the light object as a whole. This way you will enjoy maximum consistency between the engine and Blender viewport. Now you have all the knowledge about the shadows in Verge 3D. Thanks for watching. See you later.